Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Mackenzie Child and this is episode three out of five in the Ruby on Rails from the ground up series. Last week we went through and set up our development environments with everything you need to get going uh, with Ruby on Rails. If you have not watched that video yet and don't have um, your dev environment set up, please pause this, go check that out, um, and then come back. In this episode, we are going to go through the basics of the Ruby programming language. Although you don't absolutely need to learn Ruby before you learn Rails, knowing at least the basic syntax will definitely help us along uh, when we start coding our Rails application. So without further ado, let's just jump in, guys. So the best way to play around with Ruby uh, is by using the IRB, or Interactive Ruby Interpreter. You can use the IRB to quickly test out your ideas as well as learn uh, Ruby. To get started, open up a terminal window. You can find the terminal in your Applications menu um, or the command prompt on Windows and type IRB and press Enter. So IRB is a read, eval, print loop, or REPL. Basically, it reads your inputs, evaluates it, and then shows the result. So let's give it a little try. Let's type a little greeting uh, surrounded by quotation marks. Try typing, uh, good morning, beautiful, exclamation point, and then hit enter, and it prints out, good morning, beautiful. So what exactly just happened? Well, IRB evaluated the expression we wrote and outputted the results. In this case, it outputted the uh, string itself. So what if we wanted to print the results to the screen? Well, we could say uh, puts, uh, good morning, beautiful. Puts is a command to print something out uh, in Ruby. So what does the arrow nil part mean? Well, that's the result of the expression. In Ruby, a method always returns something. Puts always returns nil, which in Ruby and other languages means zilch, zero, or nothing. Just a quick note, you can get out of IRB by pressing Control plus D, and it will exit you out. If you need to get out of a current operation, for example, if I type uh, good morning and then hit enter, IRB is going to be confused, so what we can do is hit Control c to escape out of that current command um, and retype it. Also, if you hit Command plus K, you can clear your current screen. So in Ruby, your data comes in various types. Uh, we have numbers, strings, booleans, arrays, symbols, and hashes. So briefly, I want to talk about each one. First off, numbers. Ruby can do math operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, but it can also do evaluations such as even or odd values. For example, let's uh, give it a try. Let's try five plus five. It uh, returns 10, five minus two, three, uh, 10 times eight, we get 80. And um, in Ruby for the division, we would do eight forward slash two as division. So eight divided by two would be four. And then we can even check, uh, like I mentioned before, if a value is odd or even. So if I did eight dot odd question mark, it would return false because eight is a even number. Strings are words or phrases surrounded by single or double quotes. For example, we can do opening quotes and say, I am a string. We can also combine strings together by simply adding them. So if I did uh, what's and then plus up, uh, it combines those two together to form what's up. Uh, as you can see, Ruby does not put in a space by default. So uh, what we would need to do is go in there and add a space to the second string and then hit enter again. And then it uh, adds them together as a single line. Uh, you can also multiply strings if you want. For example, so if I did opening quotes, ho space closing quotes times three, it would do ho ho ho. A Boolean is an expression that evaluates to either true or false. Most of the time you'll use a Boolean operator 
either a logical operator or a comparison operator uh, to compare Boolean values. In Ruby, you can do AND, OR, and NOT to compare values between each other, which will result in either a true or false value. Uh, AND is represented by two ampersands, OR is represented by two pipe characters, and NOT is represented by an exclamation point. So for example, TRUE AND TRUE returns TRUE. Uh, TRUE AND FALSE returns FALSE. If I did true or true, it returns true. True or false would return true as well. If I did not true, whoops. If I did not true, that returns false. And if I did not false, that returns true. So comparison operators are used to test the relationship between objects. The available operators you can use are equals, which is represented by two equal signs put together, um, not equals, which is represented by a exclamation point and equals, a less than or equal to, which is the less than symbol and the equal sign. You could also use greater than or equal to, which is the greater than symbol and equals, and also less than or greater than. So if I try to compare two values. If I do 1 uh, equals 1, that's true. If I do 5 is not equal to 5, that's obviously false. Is uh, 3 uh, less than or greater than 4, that is true. If I do 3 is greater than or equal to 4, that's false. 1 is it greater than or is it less than 3, that's true is one greater than three, that is false. So in Ruby, an array is basically a list of objects. They can be any type of object, including other arrays. You can create an array by surrounding a list of objects with square brackets. For example, we could say my array, which is a variable, which we'll get to shortly, um, equals uh, one, and I'll say two, which is a string, uh, three, and I'll do, say four, which is another string. So we can mix and match integers and strings um, because we can use uh, whatever type of object we want. So if we hit that, um, that is our array. One thing to note is that arrays are indexed from zero. For example, so if I did my array and I tried to pull out the second value, you think it would be um, this two but instead it's actually the three because it starts from zero. So this would be zero, two would be one, three would be uh, two. We can also add data to an array either by adding a new array or using the less than less than operator. For example, if we pull up the my array uh, plus and we make a new array, let's say uh, five, six, and seven, you can see a new array is created with that is the combination of the old array and the new array. We can append um, data to our current array. So if we did uh, my array less than less than eight, for example, it will say one, two, three, four, eight. Uh, one thing to note is this, if we use the addition, um, add two arrays together, it will create a new array. But if we append a new item to the array, it will modify the existing array. For example, if I say my array, uh, you can see this is at now saved. Uh, but whereas when we added it, that was not saved. Symbols are similar to strings as they're made up of characters, but instead of being wrapped in quotation marks, they're usually prefixed by colon. One of the main uses for symbols are hash keys. Um, we'll get into hashes in a second, but unlike strings, symbols are unique, which makes them more memory efficient. You can see this for yourself by creating a string and a symbol and calling the object ID method on them both. For example, if we do ruby.object underscore ID, we get this big long number. And if we do um, a symbol, with ruby.object ID, 
we get a much smaller number, which makes it more memory efficient. Hashes are a collection or a set of key value pairs. Uh, it's similar to an array, except that the indexing, the hash key, can be any data type, not just an uh, integer index. Uh, when you need to access a value inside of a hash, you'll just need to pass the corresponding key through the square brackets. For example, if I do a variable called who am I and assign that to a hash, uh, opening curly, and I'll say a symbol, uh, first underscore name, and I'll assign that to my name, McKinsey. Oops, be sure to close that. And I'll do another symbol of last name and assign that to child. And be sure to add the closing curly bracket, hit enter. Now, if we want to find a value of the existing key, we can simply do who am I, and then bracket, and I'll say first name, and that returns the value. As you've seen a few times already, variables are simply a value assigned to a name. A variable can contain nearly all types of values, including numbers, strings, arrays, or a hash. Uh, a variable is assigned using the equal operator, not to be confused with the equal equals, uh, which is used for testing equality. One thing to note, a variable name can include a letter, number, or underscore, but it must begin with either a letter or an underscore. When using a multiple word variable name, it's best practice to use an underscore in between them. For example, I'll say my underscore name. Um, that's a valid variable name. So again, a variable, if I just say my name equals and then assign it to a string with my name. A method is simply a block of reusable code. Creating a method is simple. They start with a uh, def uh, followed by the name of the method and then they go on until they reach an end. And everything in between the def and the end is what gets, gets run. For example, if I say def good morning, and I'll say puts a string of good morning, beautiful. And then I'll do an end. So now if I try and run the good morning uh, method, it'll say good morning, beautiful. Ruby has a few conditional operators that you can use to control the flow of your program. Uh, they include if, unless, else if, and else. Let's briefly talk about each one. The if statement takes a Boolean expression and only executes the code if the expression evaluates to true. For example, we can assign a variable of age and say, age is 72. So I can say if age is greater than 65 uh, puts your uh, senior citizen and then end that block and you can see it outputted you're a senior citizen because uh, age was indeed greater than 65. Unless is the opposite of an if statement where it takes a Boolean expression and only executes the code if the expression evaluates to false. For example, if we do age equals 22, I can say unless age is greater than 65, I'll say put puts you're a youngin and end that. And since the age wasn't greater than 65, uh, the puts value did indeed get run. If we do the same thing, change the variable name to uh, 100 or age of 100, and then we do unless age greater than 65 uh, puts your young in and that, and it will return nil because it did not get run. An else if statement is used to manage the flow of a program. It has to be used within an if or an unless block and take a Boolean expression. It only runs the code if the previous state statements do not run and it, its expression evaluates to true. For example, if we do age equals 22, we can say if age is less than two puts um, you're still a baby. And then we'll do an if age, or else if age is 
less than 13, we'll put you are a child. Else if age is less than 19, I'll say put you are a teenager. And then we'll say else puts your an adult. And then we'll end that block. And because age is equal to 22, uh, it, none of the other values evaluated to true, so it did the else statement and said uh, you're an adult. An else block is very similar to the else if in that it has to be used within an if or an unless block and it only gets run if the other statements do not get run. But the difference between an else and an else if is the else does not take any arguments. For example, if we do age equals 22 again, we say if age is greater than 50, I'll say puts you're getting old. And then we'll say else puts you're still young. And because we're only 22, uh, the age is only 22, uh, the if statement does not get run, so uh, the else statement gets run instead. So when you're working with a collection of objects, for example, an array or in a hash, uh, sometimes you want to perform an op operation on each item within that collection. Uh, for that, Ruby provides a uh, method called each. And each method can accept one or more parameters which are listed inside of the pipe characters. For example, let's say we have a array with the values of one, two, three, four, five um, assigned to a variable called list. So I'll say list equals one, two, three, four, five. Um, if we wanted to take each value, uh, multiply the value times eight and output the results, we would do uh, list.each do um, number, and the number wrapped in the pipes is the argument, and I'll say puts number times eight. So we're multiplying the argument times eight and then end. And you can see it outputs 8, 16, 24, 32, and 40, which is each original number in the list variable um, of that array multiplied times 8. Uh, we could also write the same thing by doing list.each uh, opening brackets or curly brackets, say number, and I'll say puts number times 8, and then closing curly brackets. All right, guys, we are all finished. I want to say thank you so much for watching and be sure not to miss next week when we start coding our Rails application. So a special shout out and thank you to the awesome DevTips patrons who have sponsored this video by each uh, pledging an amount of their choosing uh, and helping making this video possible. Patrons get to enjoy these videos a few days early and on this particular series, they get access to the uh, project code that we're going to be creating together. So if you want to find out more and join me as a uh, patron of the DevTips community, visit uh, patreon.com slash devtips. And until next week, when we start coding our Rails application, I just want to say, keep on hacking.